In this video, we're going to be looking at the Zhuin Crane 4 combo and how it performed over a variety of video shoots that I got to put this through the past couple of months. In my real estate media business, I had the opportunity to exclusively use this gimbal on all of our recent real estate video shoots and some social media marketing style video content and really put it to the test. We're going to look at how well it performs as a gimbal, the unique features it has compared to others, the build quality, and some overall final thoughts. And also find out if this is going to replace my DJI RS3 Mini that I exclusively used all of last year. All right, let's get into the video right now. Okay, quick disclaimer before we get into it. Juin did send me the Crane 4 combo free of charge, but they're not telling me what to say or anything like that in this video. Everything I say are my real world thoughts and experiences using this the past couple of months. So one thing I do wanna note with my product reviews is I am more interested in testing out the real world experience or how it actually functions for actual jobs and things like that. Not so much on the specs and the specifics of what certain features do. If you're looking for that, there's other videos doing that, but I'm here to tell you how this gimbal actually performs for jobs and gigs and if you're looking to invest in it, if it's a good deal or not. So if you're new here, I run a real estate media business here in Houston, Texas, where we work with a variety of realtors producing their listing and social content on a monthly basis. And one of the big reasons that I was personally super excited to check out the Crane 4 was because it holds my new investment. I invested in the Canon R5C at the end of last year and unfortunately it doesn't fully fit my RS3 Mini. It barely holds it, not too ideal, it holds the R6 Mark II that's filming me great, but going into this year with a more video focused, higher quality video camera, I needed a new gimbal and I was really anxious to test this out. Okay, so let's just jump into the first topic, which is how good is the stabilization? I feel like if it simply can't do the basics like producing a super smooth and stable shot, it defeats the purpose of having a gimbal. Might as well go handheld or something. And I've used other gimbals in the past where I kind of had that feeling where they just weren't that great at what they're supposed to do, which is just to produce smooth footage. So now that I've been using this the past couple of months, I can honestly say that this produces really smooth shots. It works great as a gimbal. As it should. That's why I've always stuck with other gimbals like DJI because they're really great at one thing and that is just getting a smooth and steady shot. And I can honestly say also that the Crane 4 does the same. Now, one thing I did have to note was when I got this straight out of the box, mounted and balanced my camera, it was not so smooth whatsoever. In other words, I had to make a lot of tweaks in the app and dial in the settings that I need. I know everyone uses a gimbal differently where maybe they want it to respond really fast and do fast paced movements. For me, primarily doing real estate video work or capturing slow and steady shots, I want my gimbal to be smooth and steady. As you can see now, it is, you know, all of the movements, even if I use the joystick, it's very slow and steady. So I'm really happy that I finally got my settings dialed in and it produces a really smooth image. Now on the note of stabilization itself, like every gimbal out there, it's sometimes almost user error, also the gimbal, because depending on what focal length you're using, if you're using stabilization features in your camera or lens, if you're not being super careful doing the ninja walk or you're just walking like normal, you still can get some micro jitters, which is something that I noticed on here as well, maybe even a little bit more than I was used to, but in my opinion, depending on the work that you do, some of those things can be easily smoothed out in editing. For example, just putting on a little bit of warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro, or sometimes even the micro jitters are so small you won't even notice it. So always make sure that you're using as many points of contact, you have both hands, whether it's a handle or on the gimbal itself. You're doing the ninja walk, being slow and steady, and I can guarantee that you'll probably get a smooth shot with this or any gimbal. So the one drawback I feel like I did notice was when the gimbal stops turning, it's way too sudden. I'll try and show an example here along with some shots, but if I'm panning left or right, it stops too suddenly in my opinion. One of my favorite types of shots to do is kind of like a parallax shot where I'm walking into a room and I'm revealing it. So I'm kind of going like this, just you know, walking into it while turning a little bit and Overall, the shots were really good, but sometimes it would just be too robotic and kind of just stop in between and then resume the shot. So kind of not like a slow and steady all the way across like a left to right pan. So I did have to redo shots a couple of times just to make sure I got them right. And again, if I did get any little error, I could kind of smooth it out, but it definitely was one thing to note because it's something I have to be mindful of if I'm doing some sort of panning shot to make sure that 
that movement keeps going and it's not going to just stop in the middle and potentially ruin your shot or just not look as smooth and cinematic as you'd like it to be. So overall, the Crane 4 works great simply as far as giving you a really smooth gimbal look. No complaints there other than the one note that I mentioned and everything feels really nice and fluid. It responds really well. So I can honestly say that this gimbal works as it's supposed to. Okay, so now let's get into some of the features that makes this gimbal really unique in my opinion. Specifically, this little light right here. This is a 10 watt bicolor built-in light that's attached to the gimbal, which is insane to me. I've never heard of that. And it's really easy to turn on. There's a little switch right here, and if I hold it, there it is. You can see it's actually, you know, pretty soft lighting. Wow. I don't know who would actually be, you know, vlogging with this lens, but uh Hey, you have it there if you need it. It's bicolor, as you can see. And I just click on this knob and I can adjust the intensity, which it can get crazy bright too. Look at that, wow. Or I could press it again and I can control the temperature. So here we are really cool, or we can warm it up. So that's really awesome that it's bicolor. Super unique feature. I can honestly say I've never had another gimbal that does that. Now, from an actual useful perspective, that's where I feel like it kind of lacks. It's not as practical as you would think, especially the fact that you have a still kind of relatively harsh light source on the side of the gimbal next to your lens. And so let's say that you're trying to light somebody and this was your only light source it's gonna feel kind of sourcey, obviously coming straight from the lens. You know, I'll kind of get away from the light over here. You know, it's still gonna be kind of sourcey and a little bit blinding in my opinion. So one thing that I really wish that would have made this a lot more beneficial, which I know would be very difficult, but if it was one bigger, let's say it covered this whole arm over here, because the bigger the light, the softer the source it can be, especially with this little diffuser here. And also if you could move it, for example, if this could have gone over the lens, that would feel a lot more natural versus coming from the side of it. But I can understand that that's probably hard to create something like that. So. One thing I did try it out in was actually using it for a dark room in a listing. And I found mixed results. I feel like it could maybe work in some scenarios and others it couldn't. Again, because it is just that sourcey point of view from the side of the gimbal. But hey, if that helps you keep your shot a little cleaner and less noisy, by all means do it. I tried it in a media room where I turned it on to full brightness and I adjusted it to be warmer toned like the warmer tungsten bulbs in that media room and it did make a bit of a difference but again if you're dealing with any reflections you're going to see that you're going to cause some harsh shadows because you're pointing a light straight at it versus kind of bouncing it off the ceiling for example to get a more softer look like you would with real estate flash photography. But again, that's just me and the type of work that I do because I imagine if you were to use this on the dance floor at a wedding, that could probably give you some pretty cool results. And if you're getting value out of this video, you should really think about joining my community. Last year, I started a community for real estate photographers and videographers that wanna take their business to the next level. We are now over 100 members and everyone is getting so much value out of it. You get three main perks for joining at just $5 a month, which is access to a private Discord group where every day everyone posts their work, chats, all things real estate photography, videography. It's a safe place for anyone to ask their questions and get quick responses from me or others. You get access to behind the scenes video series that I post exclusively each month just to the members. And you get access to a digital welcome pack of some of my most used Lightroom presets, LUTs, and some other digital products as well. So if you're interested in joining, head to the link in the description to check it out. Okay, so next up, the combo accessories. Okay, so with the combo, you get this extendable sling grip that can be mounted right here at the bottom, along with this wrist guard, which is a game changer in my opinion. We'll get to that in a second. So again, the fact that this has been really thought out is you have an adjustable sling grip right here. So you can mount it here on the bottom and now you have an additional support or you can extend this to be more up here. You can adjust this knob so you can actually change it to be maybe next to the gimbal like this. Wow, I actually didn't try this. This might have been a pretty good setup now. <laughs> See, there's just so many things. I'm just figuring it out now. So I really like that, especially handy if you do a lot of underslung shots. So another cool feature, definitely, you can use it like this in undersling mode, or you can comfortably hold the gimbal next to you like that and a lot easier to hold it. Okay, now let's talk about this flexible wrist rest, which in my opinion should be a staple for all gimbals. So traditionally you hold a gimbal like this, you know? You're holding it like that, and even if you have an arm, whatever it is, but 
Now adding this wrist guard takes some of that weight off because it's not just, you know, all on your hand and you have to hold it up. I found that having that wrist guard gives me a third point of contact, which is so handy because usually I don't even typically use these arms. I just usually fall back to just using a gimbal like this and adding that third point of contact right there made a big difference. Whether I'm just holding the gimbal or when I go in to do the shot and it kind of rests on it that way, kind of almost taking some of the weight off and balancing it out more made a huge difference. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the combo itself. I found myself to make this setup even lighter was taking this off and just keeping the wrist guard on and I really liked it that way. Okay, next up, another feature that should just be a staple in all gimbals is this little magnetic tightening wrench. Magnetically attaches to the bottom of the plate of the gimbal and whenever you need it to take your plate on and off your camera, just goes right back there. Super handy because you don't have to carry extra tools around and if you need to swap it, it's right there. So another really unique feature that is very valuable for me, especially if you do a lot of vertical content, is how this supports native vertical mounting, but it's a lot easier even than my RS3 Mini. You can set it up in seconds. I'll do another clip showcasing that, but basically you take this plate off and slide it off and put it on this arm and that's it. All you have to do, of course, is rebalance it since you've completely changed up the setup, but the fact that you don't need any extra accessories or it doesn't take very long is super handy for shooting vertical stuff. The last major feature that I think is really great for a whole bunch of people out there, especially if they're just getting into doing gimbal work, is these balance indicators. You can see that there's a little glowing light here, here, and here on each axis, and it's there for a reason, because if I were to put some weight on this here, you're gonna see it's gonna turn red. You see that? Same thing over here. If I were to put too much weight on here, you're gonna see that that's gonna turn red because it's not properly balanced. Obviously it is balanced and that's why it went back to just being clear, but that is so great because 99% of the time when people are saying they can't get smooth shots with any gimbal, it's because it's not properly balanced and the motors are working extra hard to try and keep that camera level. So you need to properly learn how to balance your gimbal and having these indicators should be a staple on all gimbals because I honestly believe that's most of the time why people can't get smooth shots whenever they get a gimbal. Okay, and lastly, let's touch on build quality. One of the things I always talk about in reviews regarding products is I hate when they feel cheap. You know, it's one thing to be affordable and another to just be cheaply made. For me, it just doesn't excite me when I use that product. It makes me worried if it's gonna be reliable, if it's gonna break on me. I can honestly say that is not the case for the Crane 4. Holding this, using it feels very sturdy, very stable. I've put this through a bunch of shoots, some being really short, like an hour, and some ranging very long to being half day shoots. And I can say that that entire time, it feels very durable shooting inside, outside. Everything has been working as it needs to, so I'm really happy about that. And honestly, a lot more high quality than my RS3 Mini, funny enough. Everything on the gimbal feels great, especially the big touch screen that is really easy to see during the day, especially if it's sunny outside, you can quickly select your mode. I found my myself that I would just personally sit on this screen and I half the time almost always keep my gimbal and just pan follow which is just where it moves left to right and then the other mode that I use is follow so then it's just gonna follow my movements but still keep the roll axis locked and everything is still gonna be really smooth and nice. And lastly, the other feature I found myself using is lock mode. I know a lot of gimbals have this, but I kind of noticed that this is the first time. So if I were to point this over here towards the camera, no matter which way I turn this, it's not gonna move, it's gonna stay locked. And so a really cool thing about that is if you wanna stay locked on your subject or a certain thing that you're shooting, instead of risking the gimbal moving left and right a bit, you can go to lock mode. And like I said, it's not gonna move from there, whichever way you turn it or go. So. That's really cool. So now let's talk battery life. So it claims to be able to hold a battery up to 12 hours, which is insane. And also a better feature is the fact that it can charge in just an hour and 50 minutes, which is crazy fast. The charging port is located right down here and it's USB-C of course, which is really handy. And so I can honestly say that that battery life is probably accurate because I did do a really long shoot with this gimbal that was close to five to six hours and I had over half the battery left still. And then I also love the fact that this is very customizable 
outside of their own ecosystem. As you can see in some of the shots that I took, I mounted a big giant V-mount battery on the side to power the R5C and I honestly didn't expect for that to work. I kind of just took my accessory, put it on there and of course it was able to be mounted perfectly and it worked out great. So I'm really glad that it's not limited just to their ecosystem and the fact that it's pretty customizable outside of it. All right, so final thoughts. I can honestly say that over the past couple of months, I have really, really enjoyed using this gimbal, especially because like I said, I didn't know which gimbal I was going to go for next, considering coming from the RS3 Mini and upgrading to the R5C and collaborating with Juin to showcase the Crane 4 worked perfectly and like I said, I'm super happy with it because I did my initial research just like I do with sponsors. I only wanna work with companies and showcase their products if I truly find them valuable as well to my viewers. So I can honestly say I've been really satisfied using it and I honestly think it is going to replace my RS3 Mini. Now, if I'm shooting with my R6 Mark II and this one, I'm so glad that I have a backup that I can put on there with a different lens setup. But the fact that it does produce really smooth shots, it's easy to use. It has a really long battery life. It has unique features that I actually use, like the wrist guard and the fact that I can customize it with other accessories makes it perfect for what I'm doing. So until something else comes along that can either fix a problem, be lighter, or just make all of this much easier, I'm probably gonna be using this gimbal for the time being. So leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.